What up guys, it's Sarth again, and today I'm going to go over an in-depth rogue guide for Molten Core. I know Blackwing Lair was just announced, but I just started making these videos, so I figured I would get a Molten Core one out so that people could parse as high as possible for this last month. You'll still be pugging Molten Core or doing Molten Core because there's still a lot of really good loot there. Either way, it's good to know exactly what to do on each encounter of Molten Core if you want to speed clear or get a 99 parse. That being said, to get a 99 parse, it usually does take your guild doing the boss fight pretty quickly and also focusing mostly on cleave. That means the tanks need to really stack the adds and you're pretty much fighting everything at once. But the bosses that don't have cleave, you can actually have a really, really incredible parse without it being a fast kill. So this guide is kind of going to go over each and every encounter, no matter what type of guild you have but it's aimed towards people that have a faster guild and want to kill things fast. First, I'm just going to mention, before you get into Molten Core, preparation is huge. So you want to spend money or time to farm or buy your consumables. You want to make sure that you have all your world buffs. And usually I'll set my hearth to Kargath on raid nights. So right after I get my last world buff, like Warchief's Blessing, I'll instantly hearth. Or if you're a tryhard, you can have a warlock friend actually summon you right outside of Molten Core, hide and log off there. And then right when you're invited to the raid, log on, hop right in MC and log off again. Another quick thing to mention is resetting your main hand weapon swing with abilities like Sinister Strike and Backstab. If you don't know what that means, then you can check out my other video. It'll actually start with that tip. But if you're not paying attention to your weapon swing timer, then you're definitely not min maxing. You'll see in the video that I'm running as a dagger spec. This isn't exactly a personal preference, it's just actually what dropped for me. Both specs, swords and daggers, are really viable. Honestly, if you're in a speedrun, I genuinely think that swords are better. Even if you're not in a speedrun, I think swords are better because it's a lot easier to cleave. The range on Blade Flurry is tiny. I want to say it's a couple yards, but honestly, I haven't been able to find something that has the exact range. What that really means is to cleave as a dagger rogue is a lot harder because you have to position yourself behind the mob or boss and able to get backstabs off, but you also need to position yourself close enough to the other mobs and able to get the cleave off. As a sword spec, you can actually position yourself just in between the two mobs. But if you're daggers, you're really dependent on your off tank tanking the adds directly on the ass of the boss. You'll see how this affects my DPS on a few different encounters. And the swords actually improve in Black Moon Lair. So I would say aim to be sword spec. Get ready to be fighting your tanks for Maladath. Now, time for the Molen Core Guide. The first thing you want to do right as you enter Molen Core is to buff yourself all up. Then on this very first pull, you're going to use all of your cooldowns, literally everything, blow everything and do as much DPS as possible. Right after this pull, you'll jump down to the right. Make sure you jump because if you don't, sometimes you can fall into the lava and that's no good. After that, you'll just pull straight ahead. You'll use Blade Flurry probably one more time. If your group is going a little slower, you'll use them on the two giants. But if your group is going a little faster, it won't be up in time. Just pick and choose when you're going to use it. The next time you're really using CDs, is on the first boss. Now here on Lucifron, you have two choices. The ideal choice for a speed run would be to focus the boss entirely and cleave down the adds. You would use all of your cooldowns because increasing your cleave DPS will increase your DPS a lot more than using your cooldowns on Magmadar, the next fight. Right before the pull, you'll use a restorative pot so that you can hopefully avoid the MC and decurse yourself. If you're a dagger rogue, this curse makes it so that you can't even attack. And if you're swords, it's just a massive waste of your energy. The other way to speed fight Lucifron is to single target. The reason you would do this is because you don't want to instantly cleave down one of your DPS right as they get MC'd. Ideally, you have people that are ready to dispel the MC as fast as possible, but it is really a scary fight. If you're the person MC'd, you can die instantly and you're kind of upset about it. This is the first real reason why we use Flask of the Titans on speedruns and Elixir of Fortitude. The next fight is Magmadar. The only real thing about Magmadar that can be annoying is his fear. 
If you're not undead, then it's hoping that your Tremor Totem ticks at the right time. You won't have cooldowns up for this fight because it's either going to be 2 or 1 pull after killing Lucifer. If you're running a speed run, then you'll probably pull all three of the dog packs right at once, right after Lucifer. But if not, you'll probably pull two at once, and then the last dog pack will allow you to pull rage on your warriors. This fight, you're probably going to lose to your warriors. That's fine. Be ready to use your Will of Forsaken the second you get feared. Other than that, keep Slice and Dice up, and as a dagger rogue, you're not even going to get a chance to eviscerate. It's basically just backstab Slice and Dice. Stay in range, and ideally, your tank will start kiting Magmadar back towards the entrance of the room so that you can run out as fast as possible, so you just need to stay in range and move with your tank. That's an easy fight. As you're running back, a lot of groups do the long route around towards Gehennis, but actually you can just run right here, jump across the lava. Once you get to this lava, your entire group needs to run across all at once. Your tanks will pick up the trash. If you have healers or range staying back on the ledge, then if the destroyer drops aggro, he's going to bug out. Just jump across and you're good to go. The next little tip for increasing your speed is to range pull Gehennis. You can see the mobs that we have left alive here, and you can have a hunter pull Gehennis into position and then you'll all attack him. We'll actually use this as well on Shaz, but I'll get to that when we're there. On Gehennis, as a melee, you're going to want to pop a free action potion. Getting stunned during your cleave is the worst thing that can possibly happen. Save your cooldowns for an optimal time when the adds are stacked on the boss. This is one of the most annoying things that can happen for a dagger rogue. If you're in a speed run, ideally your group will all be attacking the boss and cleaving down the adds. But if everyone's attacking the trash and they're moving around, you're going to miss out on a lot of your cleave. If you're attacking the adds themselves or if you're attacking the boss, either way, you're going to miss out on some cleave. Just be aware of this. This fight is one of the big ones where your tanks and off tanks need to be working really well together to make sure that everything is stacked if you want to do as much damage as possible. That being said, this is an easy fight and you can do huge DPS if things go well. Moving on, next is Gar. Some groups will usually skip Gar so that they can keep their buffs, but if you're in a speed run, then you're going to kill Gar because backtracking is a waste of time. If you lose your buffs, that sucks. Hope that everyone gives you trash buffs. Honestly, I literally whisper every class that has a trash buff and ask for a level 1 buff of it. I do it personally, you should too, because if you can get those buffs, hopefully you can save the important ones. On Gar, the big thing really is to burn them as fast as possible before you lose your buffs. It doesn't really matter as much if you're fighting just Gar and banishing the adds, or if you have a tank tanking the adds. Ideally, you have your main tank tanking all of the adds, and everybody is focusing on Gar. The tank on pull will use a sapper charge to get aggro on all the adds, and then they'll spend some time just building aggro on all the adds. When Gar is around 30%, or if your tank did an incredible job of building aggro, maybe around 50%, then everyone will start AoE DPSing. This means you're going to want to save your cooldowns for the AoE DPS phase. This is only viable in a speedrun group. If your group isn't going to cleave, then you don't need to save your cooldowns, just use them as an optimal time. The next boss is Baron. Baron's a pretty simple fight as well. You can use a greater fire protection pot, but even if you're speedrunning, you're not going to stay in for the entire duration of his AoE. His AoE attacks get progressively stronger. The first tick might do a little bit of damage, but the last one does like 5,000 damage, so you don't want to get hit by that. On this fight, you're not really going to use your cooldowns. You're going to want to save them for Shaz because you're not going to have them back up. You might use Blade Flurry if your group is a little slower, but that's really it. To do the most DPS on Baron, you want to use your first attack, instantly slice and dice, and then after you come back from his first AoE, use slice and dice again as you're running back. Ideally, your tank will run out towards the group so that when he runs back to put Baron back in position, Baron runs closer to you. This tiny bit of instead of having a tank run away and waiting for Baron to get closer to you, can affect your DPS quite a bit actually. The only other thing to worry about in Baron is to make sure that you don't blow up the raid. If you become the bomb, just run out to your raid's designated bomb spot. But hope you don't get the bomb and it's a pretty simple fight. Right after killing Baron, I'll usually pop a Greater Arcane Resistance pot. This is a pre-pot because it's an hour long and it'll be useful for Shaz. 
So for Shaz, you can see that we leave these trash pulls on the side alive. Have a hunter run up, pull Shaz, and right when he's in position, everyone start DPSing. This does affect your overall parse because it does take 3-6 to six seconds for Shaz to even get to you, but this is faster for a speed run in total because you're not killing one more of these long trash pulls. So for Shaz, you're going to use your cooldowns. The thing to note really is on the pull, you can use a restorative pot to get rid of the curse on yourself. Restorative pots are definitely your friend because in a speed run group, your DPS is focused only on DPSing. You don't have mages to decurse you. Using a restorative pot on Shaz is actually a lot more mitigation than using a second greater arcane resistance pot. Other than that, use your cooldowns, burn the boss, there you go. Sulfur on Harbinger is one of the most fun bosses for a rogue. This is because you're gonna get to cleave no matter what. Even if you're not in a speedrun group, you're gonna be able to do a lot of cleave on these ads. On Sulfuron, you're not gonna target the boss and cleave down the ads. You're actually gonna target a specific ad so that you can get a kickoff. Stopping them from healing is more important than focusing on your DPS on this fight. So a big thing on Sulfuron, if you're a dagger rogue, is to ideally be assigned to one of these left mobs. We have them marked as Skull and X. Those two mobs are what most people are focusing and the rest of the mobs usually run towards them. What that means for a dagger rogue is you can position yourself right behind those mobs and usually everything will jump right on top of you so you'll get your cleave off. You're going to want to use your sapper charge on this fight when the mobs are all stacked up and all of your cooldowns on your cleave phase. After the cleave phase you might be sitting at some really really high DPS and to keep that parse up it really depends on how fast your guild kills the boss himself. You're going to be losing DPS, don't even worry about it, just do your normal rotation, do as best as you can. After Sulfuron, you move on to Golmag. Golmag as a fight is basically the same thing as Magmadar. It's pretty much a tank and spank. You have nothing really to worry about. All you have to do is focus on your rotation. Even if you have your cooldowns back by this fight, I would save them because you're going to be doing a lot of cleave on Major Domo. So, sit back, relax, focus on your rotation, and watch as warriors destroy you in the last 20%. There's nothing really you can do, just let it happen. Right after Golmag, Pop a Greater Shadow Resistance Pot. You're going to want a Greater Shadow Resistance Pot up on yourself for Major Domo. There's two major strategies to Major Domo. CCing some and killing the rest. Or if you're in a speed group, you're going to be wanting to kill all the adds at one time. This kind of means your group will focus on one mob initially, while all of your tanks and off tanks pick up all the rest. So what you're going to want to do here is save your cooldowns till that mob is dead. The ideal thing for any fight obviously is to use all of your cooldowns when you're going to get the most out of them, which is mainly the most cleave. You can use your sapper charge while all of the mobs are up, but I would save your blade flurry and adrenaline rush and thistle tea for when mobs are stacked a little bit tighter so you can make sure that you're not missing out on any damage. If your group is killing one side first and then the other side later, I would actually save all of your cooldowns for after you kill the first four mobs, because right after four mobs die on Major Domo, everything becomes immune to CC, then you're going to end up stacking them all together no matter what. Obviously, wait till you're about to have an energy tick to pop your adrenaline rush as usual. Easy fight, lots of cleave, this fight is awesome. The last encounter in Molten Core is Ragnaros. This is probably the most controversial encounter when it comes to strategy. The ideal strategy is for all of your melee to stay in when he's doing his AoE knockback. What you want to do is get in max melee range and just stay there. Most of the time you won't get knocked back. If someone does, it's usually a warrior and they can just intercept back into the boss. Running in and out every time he does his knockback is a huge waste of time and it scuffs all of your melee DPS. All melee should stay in and fight the boss. 
Just max range him, focus on your rotation. You're going to have your cooldowns again, destroy him. Ragnaros is super easy. He's basically a tank and spank. You don't even have to move. That's pretty much it. This was a comprehensive Molten Core guide going over every encounter, and I left some notes on the screen just to say what I messed up. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment or swing by my Twitch. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Thanks for watching. Hope you get out there and destroy the meters before Blackwing Lantern comes out.